Good morning, everyone. My name is Bishop Marcia Dinkins, and I would like to welcome you to the release of the Reimagine Appalachia's new paper uh, press conference. I am so glad that you're here. I'd like to welcome everyone to our press conference this morning. Uh, again, as we release, speak to the release of Reimagine Appalachia's newest paper entitled, Maximizing Value, Ensuring Community Benefits. This paper details the policies we must have in place if federal invest investments in the Appalachian region are going to benefit those most impacted by our region's economic struggles. We must tend to the frayed edges of our society where the whole fabric is at risk. We at Reimagine Appalachia have been working on this paper for months and have consulted with dozens of stakeholders in the region. One of our most valued partners in the process has been the AFL-CIO, and we're so pleased to be joined by the presidents of the Pennsylvania, Ohio, West Virginia, and Kentucky AFL-CIO. So at the end of the day, we believe Appalachia can do its part to become carbon neutral, but we're going to do it our way. And part of our way means maximizing jobs to uh, maximizing these investments to ensure that they create good union jobs. Appalachia is union strong. The union movement in this country started in the coal mines. We also want to make sure that we're creating targeted opportunities for coal workers um, with these new investments. We also want to build pathways for low-wage workers, particularly black workers, women, and other people of color into these good union, into these good union jobs. And we want to make sure that these monies are spent the right way, and that starts with public input and community oversight. oversight. At the end of the day, this is not about retraining uh, our workers for jobs they don't want in places they don't want to go. We have an incredibly skilled workforce and we need their help actually to build the future that we want to live in. And now our nation, our region and our state must move forward with an ambitious plan to rebuild and transform America's infrastructure. Clean energy technologies ranging from electric vehicles and the associated charging infrastructure to the way we use energy in our buildings and businesses and power our communities gives us a unique opportunity to create good jobs. This won't happen overnight, but the foundation and investments for the future are being put down now and reimagine Appalachia is right that it must be grounded in principles and policies that put workers first. We believe reimagine Appalachia has a vision and roadmap that will guide this work and seize the opportunity that the Biden administration and private enterprise are pursuing. To be clear, working people must be front and center of any discussion on public investments in clean energy, infrastructure, and innovation to ensure that these investments support high quality union jobs that build worker power by including labor standards and expanding the right to organize. Done right, building the clean energy systems of the future can make great strides in the bottom line of creating jobs and raising wages while reducing emissions. But to do it right means not just promising that the clean energy economy will lift up our workforce and our local communities, but by enacting policies that make this perfectly clear. We are ready to usher in a new era, one that puts workers first and prioritizes rebuilding America and our working middle class by strengthening unions. But I believe that challenges create opportunities. And we have a once in a lifetime opportunity uh, first to rebuild and repair our, our crumbling infrastructure, uh, provided that we do that with local workers uh, that are paid union wages and benefits, uh, things that are needed to support the uh, middle class families. We should also be using American steel and other products uh, manufactured here uh, in the United States of America. You know, when the Reimagine Appalachia job study uh, came out and showed that in West Virginia alone, 40,000 jobs will be created through investments like President Biden's American Jobs Plan. But these jobs won't address the long-term issues we see in our state unless we include strong labor standards and project labor agreements, as Amanda uh, pointed out earlier. One key point to understand 
is the wide range of jobs that will be created and the scale of investment needed in our region to get to net zero by 2050. We're not just talking about wind and solar jobs, as Amanda mentioned. This is much broader than that. We're talking about pipe trades, laying underground pipe for broadband and a more resilient grid, operating engineers and laborers, capping oil and gas wells and uh, remediating, remediating brownfields, machinists and operators in energy efficient factories, electricians, carpenters, laborers, for coal miners, uh, building electric vehicle infrastructure and laying rail, and many other jobs. And One important policy note that this paper highlights is the importance of quality pre-apprenticeship programs. Union apprenticeship programs are the gold standard to create pathways out of poverty to family-sustaining middle-class jobs. An important priority to increase the access to life-changing apprenticeship programs is to create targeted hiring programs using first source hiring systems for coal industry workers and historically disadvantaged groups residing within 50 mile radius of a project. We should also require at least 20% of apprenticeship of, of hours work to be completed by registered apprenticeships, apprentices or locally based apprenticeship readiness programs with at least half of those work hours completed by workers from targeted hiring programs. The administration knows that it needs to do right by working people and that ensuring strong labor standards is the surest, <clears throat> excuse me, the surest way to rebuild the middle class and grow our economy from the middle out.